Hi everyone, Nathan again with another True Tech troubleshooting tutorial. Today's tutorial is going to put together a lot of the other videos and tutorials that I've done in the past and give you a, a, an overview of how all these things we've been learning work together. And so we have a form here I've built that's based on documentation in a court setting and it has two tables. It's a flowed document, it has multiple pages, it incorporates the use of master pages. It has uh, tables that grow. It uses check boxes. It uses command buttons. So it uses a lot of the things. Also does aggregate totaling in the tables. It uses a lot of things that uh, we've shown in some of the tutorials. And I want to just give, uh, instead of a, a real simple form demonstration, I want to give a more complicated demonstration to show you how all these things can come together to make really well put together forms. So first we'll preview the form and we'll talk about some of its features. In this form you know, I've, got, I've got a place for a name, which is just a text field, a place for a number, a docket number, and then we have this command button here with the text box next to it that has a number of defendants and we'll say five. When you click on that, that causes this table to have five lines instead of just the default of three. And then the victims, right now it's defaulting to three, we're going to put 20 and when we do that that causes the table to grow into multiple pages and give us 20 lines and our total line is still at the bottom of that but on the first page we do have totals as well so a lot of things happening here uh, as I put in some values we get some mathematics going on in the total fields and as you can see that stuff carries over to the final page with these values here, aggregate values. So this is a very robust form. Uh, another thing to notice is values that we put in the first page um, up here at the top, the docket number and the defendant name carry over to the header of the next page if we wanted to change the amount of lines in the form, all we have to do is change these things. And all of a sudden, the numbers recompute based on the fact that I took out the, the, uh, the lines that had other values in it. And so let's talk about what's going on here at the design level then. A lot of things going on. First, in our hierarchy, you can see uh, we have a complicated hierarchy where we have master pages with uh, two different master pages. One is the front page with just a, a True Tech troubleshooting tutorial header up here at the top and a large body. And then the second page, which would be any continuous overflow page, a smaller amount of body area, a secondary header, um, a sub header that gives some more information, and then the same top header as we had in the first page. So a little bit different there. And the way we do this, the way we make this work is our main page, of course, is uh, in pagination is tied to uh, master page number one but then any s any pages that are referenced after that as we see in our main if it must be paginated then it goes to the content area which is the second page body found right here So if these tables grow past th three and five lines respectively, it'll go to page two, and that is where master page two comes in. But at the initial startup of the document, there is a page two, but if we were to shrink that table to four lines, or three lines, we would not need page two anymore. It would go away. So that's master pages applied we have here inside of the main body a header which talk which is talked about in the form flow tutorial and inside that header which is positioned we have positioned these various tools to give us the ability to grow the tables by the amount of line numbers entered into these two text boxes here and here and of course the command button has a little bit of JavaScript behind it 
right here. That gives us the code to make these rows of the tables grow to the amount that's typed in here. So how does that work? Well, first of all, you have to have your table set up correctly so th this kind of JavaScript can work. And the way you do that is in your table, you must have your table correctly set up with the rows that are not going to grow, the rows that are going to be just static, like the header row and the subheader row. And as I switch these, look at the blue handles moving up and down from here to here. And then we have a row that we're allowing to grow. And you can see that because over here on the right, under binding, we have a minimum, a maximum, and an initial count. And so that's row one. That's the row we're going to deal with in our code right here. Table defense dot row one. The instance manager is set to the value of whatever is put in there. But it has an initial value, as you can see here on the right, has an initial count of three. So that's when we preview the form. That's the, the amount of rows that are there. But that can be changed by entering a four in that field there. Same thing happens on this field down here. We have a, a header row with one cell. We have a subheader row. We have row one, which can grow. But then, interestingly enough, we have a footer row on this one that does a little bit of aggregate functions. Now, if you look on the left of these names in the hierarchy, you can see an icon that shows you what the table is doing. The header row has an icon with the, the row at the top highlighted. The footer has the one at the bottom and the row has the middle, and that gives you a visual representation of what's going on here. Uh, some code related to this field that is important is the aggregate cells here where we're totaling things. These cells are set to numeric, and they have a calculation script in them, and the calculation script is found here under the script editor, and it's actually in form calc. We didn't write this one in JavaScript because the form calc way is a little bit easier. It only takes one line of code. And uh, all this is doing is basically summing all the values of the fields above it, no matter how many row ones exist, me meaning no matter how many times the user adds uh, to the number of victim rows, this is going to add them all, no matter what happens. And we saw that when I demonstrated the, the form earlier. Same thing exists in these two fields as well. We also have a little bit of formatting here, cell formatting. Since we set this cell to numeric field, we have a pattern set of currency that allows the user is entering numbers, they don't have to type the dollar sign and it'll have a consistent look to it. And we also have a numbering system that appears in this cell right here, cell number one, in both of the growing row fields. That's important because when we preview the form, whatever the amount of rows are, they receive a number on them. And no matter what we do here, if we make this 10, we want that number to be consistent. And so the JavaScript that's involved there, where we're taking the raw value of this field, which is set to a text field, and we're saying the raw value of this field is the instance index of the row it's a part of plus one. And the reason we do that is because instance index starts with zero. So it'd be zero, one, two, three. That'd be how it would come if we didn't have that that one there. If we, if we took away the plus one and previewed the form, then you'd have a zero, one, two. That doesn't look right. So we want to have plus one in there. So this form does a lot of things. And the reason I'm showing it to you is to show you how you can add all these things together that we're learning in these tutorials to make um, a very robust form that can do a lot of things. So, like always, please continue to comment and ask questions, and be glad to answer them and provide further explanation for things that are not clear. And remember to check the blog, truetechtroubleshooting.blogspot.com, for related videos and content. And like we always say, IT problems are usually simple, but they're never easy. We'll see you next time.